Amen. It's good to have everybody here tonight. We've got a good crowd for Sunday night. We want to welcome, we've got uh, at least three visitors that I know of. We got Ann, Sister Ann, um, I believe did I say that right? Where's she at? Back there. We got Sister Tracy, she's going to be coming to sing for us here in a minute. And we got Devin in the back. We got any other visitors here tonight? We got the Martins back again tonight. All right, let's give our visitors a good welcome. God's doing some great and mighty things in our church. It excites me. Uh, definitely can feel the love, feel the unity. I just feel like God's just uh, mending our, our hearts. Amen. All right, does anybody have a spoken prayer request tonight as we open our service with a word of prayer? I know uh, Sister Alonzo, she needs... The Lord to move for her. She's going to have some lab reports and stuff tomorrow, so be in prayer for, for that. Anybody else tonight have a spoken request? All right, let's remember that. Okay, let's remember that. And let's, all right, let's continue to remember that need. Let's remember Brother Spears, and God continue to touch him. Yes. Just remember Willie Parr. Yes, let's remember that. Anybody else? All right, let's remember that need. Yes. Just remember Brother Brother Ball here. He needs a touch. Sister Brackett, she's healing well. Right. Good. Praise the Lord. All right, let's remember uh, John Carlos. Sometimes he plays the drums for us, so let's remember him. God will continue to touch him and strengthen his knee. Anybody else need prayer tonight? All right, let's all stand. Let's welcome the Lord into this house. Ain't you thankful for everything that he does for us? Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. God, we thank you for what you did this morning. God, for the needs that you met and that you supplied. God, we pray tonight, Lord, for each and every request, Lord, that has been made mention in this service. God, you've seen it all. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would move and, Lord, that you would send deliverance. God, that you would send healing, God, and restoration their way. Lord, we know today, Lord, that there's nothing that is too big or is impossible, God, for you to do. God, I need your help tonight, Lord, as I minister the word, Lord, I need Lord, just the anointing that comes from above. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just touch the singing tonight. Lord, every part of this service, God, I pray that you'd receive all the glory from it. God, we just pray that you continue to flow and minister in this church. God, we know that the enemy has tried his best to destroy, but he is defeated and he has lost that battle. And we stand tonight united and we declare the victory. And God, we have that victory because of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, we love you tonight and we praise you. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Help us tonight in Jesus' name. I mean, those you just got to keep on praising and got to keep on pressing until God turns something around for you. I just love the Lord and I'm, I'm keeping on pressing on. You know, we sing that song, Press On. Sometimes it's hard to press. Sometimes you feel like there's something in your way. But if you just keep on pushing, that means pray until something happens. God's going to turn it around. Worship with us. Let's sing this song. I'm going to keep on till God turns this thing around. Well, I'm going to keep on till God turns this thing around. I'm going to pray.
We praise your name. We're going to keep on until God turns it around. And he's going to turn it around, church. He's going to turn it around. I believe it in the name of Jesus. Worship with us as we come and sing tonight.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we give the Lord another good clap of praise tonight? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ain't you glad for the power of the Holy Ghost that gives us freedom to worship? The Bible said where the Spirit of the Lord is that there is liberty. There's freedom. Amen. Ain't you glad tonight you're not bound, but you've been set free? Ain't you glad to be covered by the blood of Jesus? Holy, holy, holy is he. Lord, we glorify you tonight. I want to thank you tonight for uh, being here and for being a part of this service and just coming with a with an eagerness to just worship the Lord. Amen. I believe we need to come into the house of God with a with a, a burden to worship sometimes. It's good to come into the house of God and just pour it all out to Him, ain't it? Give it all to Him. I want to thank you this, uh, this day for the offering uh, that you all gave to the youth. We raised $1,527 at the last count that we had. And I think we are probably taking in more. I know we got some pledges and different things, and so I think more will come in, and that, was, uh, that will be enough to buy the chairs. So praise the Lord for that. I appreciate everybody tonight. All right, we're going to worship the Lord tonight again with our giving. We'll ask our ushers if they will come. Ain't you glad for everything that God does? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Brother Ivy, would you pray over our offering for us tonight? Man. Comforter. He abides with us everywhere we go. He's with us every day of every hour. Amen. We got a special singer tonight, and uh, Sister Tracy, right? All right. We're so glad to have you, and you're going to play the piano. Let's just worship the Lord with her tonight. Can we do that? Amen. I'm so excited to be here. When always love coming up here. It's been about three years since I've been able to make it up in this area. I'm from the coast, so <laughs> um, but I'm just so thankful to be here tonight. And, uh, the Lord gave me this song a few years ago. Um, I was, it was during the COVID period, and I was down praying, and I was praying about some situations. Some pertained to me, some didn't, but they couldn't be fixed by human hand. Got any of them? So I just said, Lord, just fix, mend what is broken. It's an just men, what is broken? So every time one of them situations would run through my mind during the day, the weeks after that, I said, Lord, just men, what's broken? 
And then my pastor got up. He's my co-writer on lots of my songs because he'll get up and preach on what I'm already pondering on. And he preached on going down to the potter's house. But he put it in such a way I hadn't heard it before. And I said, well, here we go. We got us a song. So if you have one of those situations today that you know that nobody can mend it but the Lord, go on and give him the pieces. Because if you hold on to him, he ain't going to fix it as fast as he could if you just go on and surrender him. So I pray this will be a blessing to you. I came to him with pieces in my hands. He said, give them to me. I tried to tell him there's no way that they'll be whole again. He said, give them to me. When I tried to explain just how bad it was he wasn't listening to me for Jesus took the pieces and said I'm the man of broken things the creator As he took the pieces and began to work, he amazed me. Gently he took everyone and put it where it belongs. Oh, he amazed me. Then I stood.
on just one minute. The devil has tried his best to destroy this church, but he is defeated tonight. He's defeated every single day that we walk through this door. The enemy is defeated. He's a mender of broken dreams. Will you sing that just one more time, just maybe a verse and a chorus? Can we stand and worship the Lord all over this house? I tell you what, reach out and ask God to restore unto you your broken dreams. Ask God to restore to you the things that the enemy has stolen from you. God can give you back your peace. He can give you your joy. He can give you anything that you've lost. I came to him with pieces in my hands. He said, give it to me. I tried to tell him there's no way that they'll be whole again. He said, give them to me. And when I tried to explain just how bad it was, he wasn't listening to me. Jesus took the pieces and said, If you got your Bibles, will you turn with me to Matthew chapter number 21? Thank you, Jesus. Ain't you glad he's a mender? And he's mending things together. You know, sometimes uh, we might feel like things are just a little bit different. We may not always run or shout or rejoice. But we are healing. Look at your neighbor and say we're in the healing process. And what God is doing is he's, he's taking these broken pieces and he's mending them back together to make something beautiful and to make something perfect and to make something worthy out of it. Amen. Ain't you glad that God does those things? And can I tell you today that the Holy Ghost, I believe he's ministering in a specific way to this church 
I believe he's ministering in a way that maybe is sometimes feels a little different because he knows exactly what we have need of. And what he's doing is he's bringing healing to us. And it's much better to, to have what you need than to have something that you don't need. Amen. And I need, I need help from the Lord tonight. I don't know about you, but I need God's help every single day that I live. I want to preach to you out of the book of Matthew, chapter number 21. And when you found verse 10, say, praise the Lord. Just going to read one verse tonight. The Bible said, And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? I want to continue, and hopefully I can finish this uh, this group uh, series up, I guess, tonight maybe, on the unsearchable riches of Christ. But tonight I want to focus on his power because we know that God is full of love. We know he's full of grace. He's full of compassion. He's full of mercy. But he's also full of power. Look at your neighbor and say he's all-powerful. He's all-powerful. And he can do for you like no other can do. He is your mender tonight. Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. God, we just thank you for your presence, Lord, that we feel in this church house tonight. God, we know that people have been brought into this place, and it has not been by accident, but God, it has been ordained for us to come together in this service. God, I just pray tonight, Lord, that you would anoint me as your speaker, and God, that you would anoint the ears of your church, God, that they would receive, and God, let us just enjoy this word. Let it be encouragement and nourishment, Lord, to our spiritual man. God, I just pray that you would help us tonight to dwell in your power and to realize, God, that you've got almighty power. Lord, there's nothing that you are limited by, and so, God, we praise you tonight knowing that you have all power and all things are in your control, and we bless you tonight, and we ask for your help in the name of Jesus. And the Dallas Church of God said, Amen. Turn around, greet your neighbor, tell them it's good to see them again tonight at Dallas Church of God. We know that uh, in Matthew chapter 21, we know that this is... Jesus' triumph entry in one of the Gospels into Jerusalem. And we know that uh, we celebrate today as being Palm Sunday. And we know that there was multitudes that went before and that followed Jesus and they cried and they said, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And then in verse number 10, we come to the, to the reading where and the Bible said, and when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? I want to talk tonight just for a few moments about the unsearchable riches of Christ's power. You see, we got to understand that when Jesus came, he, he came in a loving way. He came in a lowly way. The Bible said that he came and he made himself of no reputation. And he came and he, he was made to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And we know that he came and he was full of grace, and we know that when he came that he was full of truth. We know that he came in a sacrificial way because he had prayed in the garden and he had prayed until his sweat became as great drops of blood, praying that he would be able to fulfill the will of God, the Heavenly Father. You see, it's hard for us sometimes to imagine that God in the flesh, which was Jesus Christ, was praying to God the Heavenly Father. And it's hard for us sometimes to realize that, that God became man and he decided that he was going to go to an old rugged cross and that he was going to redeem us and reconcile us back to God the Heavenly Father so that we would have a means of escape, that we don't have to die and that we don't have to go to hell but we can live in heaven and we can live free because of the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. Can I tell you, the Bible declares that without the shedding of blood that there would be no remission of sin. You can't get to heaven any other way except the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus declared in John 14 and 6, he said, I'm the way and I'm the truth and I'm the life. And he said, no man can come unto the Father unless he comes by me. But there's a lot of people in the church world today that are, that are wanting to try to make it some other way. There's people in the church world today that have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And what that means is that many want the power to receive what they want. 
And sometimes we, we think that when we come to church, it's like a spiritual buffet, and we just go and we pick and choose the things that we want to do, the things that we want to honor God in and the things that maybe we just put to the side and we just don't take that much time or put that much attention on. But can I tell you that we've got to make sure that we're abiding by the full gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't have time to pick and choose, but if the Bible says it, we need to believe it. And if the Bible says it, we need to do it. Amen. Oh, can I get a hearty amen on that? If the Bible says it, we need to do it. Amen. All of it. Amen. And to be God's people, we're going to have to come to the realization that we're going to have to resist our flesh. Look at your neighbor and say, resist it. Resist our flesh, and we're going to have to pursue God's divine will in our life. But many want to come, and they want to have the power to receive what they want. But this power that we're talking about tonight, it will give you exactly what you have need of. You see, a lot of times when we talk about people having a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof, you know, it's easy for us to run laps around a church. It's easy for us to shout, and it's easy for us to uh, sometimes, you know, do the things that are charismatic in some ways. But, but you know what? I, I don't just desire to have a religious form, but I desire for the power of God to work in my life and menace, minister in my life in a lot of many different ways. And I believe that God can do that with his love and with his mercy and with his compassion and with his restoration and with his power. I believe that God desires to do a work in us that makes us complete what the scripture said in him. Look at your neighbor and say, we need to be complete in him. God don't just want to do something partially, but God wants us to be complete in him. And the only way that you'll ever be complete and the only way that you'll ever be perfect is in him. It's in Jesus. And I'm here tonight to declare to you that actions speak louder than words because actions are a reflection of our heart. Bear with me for just a moment as we search the Scripture. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 9 and 10, the Scripture declares the, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Question mark. The Scripture declares, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Can I tell you tonight that the heart is what requires a change? Look at your neighbor and say, our heart requires a change. Our heart requires a change. Jesus declared, he, he said that we had to be born again. We got to be born of the water and we got to be born of the spirit. We've got to have a change inside of our heart. And when the Lord changes our heart, I believe it changes our actions. Amen. I believe it changes who we are. It don't just change us because we come to church on Sunday, but it changes us on who we live like week to week and day to day. Amen, that we've got love inside of us, that we've got compassion, that we've got forgiveness, that we're willing to, to be compassionate toward other people and we, because of what we know that God has done in our heart and inside of our life, that we can do those things, that we can bear forth that fruit. And the heart needs to be changed. When the heart is right, can I tell you, and when the heart is humbled, that we've got to understand that we've got an almighty and we've got a powerful God that will renew a right spirit inside of us. When we humble our heart, what it takes in order to be saved, I believe, is an humble heart and a contrite spirit. Amen. I believe what it takes for a, for a man to be used of God is an humble heart and a contrite spirit. God can't do anything with your pride. He can't do anything with your boastfulness. Amen. He can't do anything with your selfish ways. But what God needs is your humility. And what God needs is for you to surrender it all to him and say, Lord, this might be my life that I'm living, but I'm giving it to you and I want you to honor me, Lord, because I'm going to honor you and honor the Lord with your life. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse number 10, the Bible said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. You don't know how many times that I've had to pray that, ser that sermon right there. And I believe that that was a prayer that David prayed. And I believe that he declared that he wanted to have a clean heart before the Lord. I, I tell you what, we need a clean heart before the Lord. If we want God to use us and if we want God to bless us and if we want God to, to begin to minister in us and through us, we're going to have to have a clean heart because the Lord's not going to dwell in an unclean vessel. Amen. I'm preaching to the church tonight. Amen. So let's go to 2 Timothy chapter number 3. And I want to talk about this power for just a few moments. 
In the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 3, verses 1 through 5, the Bible said, This know also that in the last days that perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, and proud, and blasphemers, and disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. And finally, in verse number 5, he said that they would have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, and he said, from such to turn away. Can I tell you that there's a lot tonight that we can take away from that one verse right there in verse number five when he says that people are going to have a form of godliness, but they deny the power of thereof. And he said from such to turn away. You see, this power that we've got to understand that the power of the Lord that he gives to us is the power to live godly, not just to act it or not just to pretend it, but the, but the act of actually being able to do it because of the power that the Lord is manifesting inside of us. Amen. You see, you can't save yourself. You can't sanctify yourself. You can't fill yourself with the baptism. You can't, you can't do anything on your own. But Jesus declared that he was the vine and that we're the branches. And he said, without me, you can do nothing. We are helpless without being connected to the Lord. And people today have, unfortunately, they have lost connection. And so we, we get into this, and I, my mind, I just, it went so many different places. Let's think about Paul the Apostle for just a minute. About the Apostle Paul, about how he describes the spirit of man. Talking about how man is going to be in the last days. I believe that this was wrote to young Timothy. And I think that he was writing to Timothy, and I think he was trying to give somewhat of a warning, and he was trying to speak about how these people, how they're going to be acting and how they're going to be conducting themselves. And I don't think it's just the world, but I think that he was probably addressing these matters even to the church, to those that call themselves Christians. Come on. Having a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. And I believe as Paul was sitting in this Roman jail and knowing that all the things that he had endured and being mindful of the persecution that was arising against the first century church, that many thoughts of wisdom began to flood his mind. Do you believe that? I believe that as he's sitting in that jail, I think he's just kind of reminiscing and he's got all these thoughts going through his mind. I believe that Paul was very well aware of all that was taking place to stop the gospel and the preaching of the cross and to preaching about Jesus and about his kingdom and, and doing all that the first century church was doing to establish the kingdom because he was one of the ones in the very beginning that persecuted the church of God. But he met Jesus on his way to Damascus desiring letters and the Lord knocked him down off of his horse with a great light, and it shone down upon him. And, and the Bible tells us that his name was changed from Saul to Paul after an Ananias laid hands on him. Amen. But these were, these were times that they're talking about, that perilous times were going to come. Now, mind you, he wasn't talking about war. He wasn't talking about famine. He wasn't talking about disease at this particular time. But he was talking about the condition of the heart of man. Can I tell you again, it's the heart that needs a change. It's the heart that needs a change. But now as he is writing this letter, he knows within himself, I believe, that time is short. But there's still a young man who is out there in Timothy. And Paul, I believe, was depending on Timothy. And I believe that's why he's writing this little note to him in 2 Timothy chapter 3. I believe he's, he's trying to warn him and trying to prepare him to let him know that there's going to be people out there that have a love for self. There's going to be people out there that have a love for money. They're going to be boasters. They're going to be proud. They're going to be blasphemers. They're going to disobey their parents. There's going to be people that are going to be unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving. There's going to be slanderers, those without self-control, those that are brutal, those that are despisers of good, those that are traitors, those that are headstrong, those that are haughty, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, and they've got a form of godliness about them. I think that's what Paul's saying to Timothy. they got that form of godliness about them. 
but they've got all this other stuff too. And he's saying they've denied the power, he said, from such to turn away. But you know what I love about this church? Yesterday I had the opportunity to go out here and I had the opportunity to fellowship with the seniors of the church. Give them seniors a hand. Can I tell you one thing about the seniors? The seniors, the church wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the seniors. Now let me tell you something about the youth. The church ain't going to be here in the future without the youth. And so that tells me one thing, that they've got to come together. Amen. Come on. We need the youth and we need the seniors. And it's, it's beautifully illustrated right here in this particular passage of Scripture. And I believe that Paul is doing his absolute best as he is sitting in the Roman jail to send out a letter to Timothy to let him know of the things that he's going to face, the things that he's going to encounter. And as he writes this letter, I believe that he trusts his experience. Look at your neighbor and say, sometimes you've got to trust your experience. We've got to trust our experience as a Christian. He knows where Jesus has brought him from. Paul knew exactly where the Lord had brought him from, what he had delivered him from. And he knows that this will not be an easy job for a young man like Timothy. And there may be some concern that Timothy, you know, maybe he was too weak. You know, sometimes we, we look at the youth and we look at the, the future church sometimes. And, and if we're not careful, we'll be too judgmental and we'll say, they're too weak. They're not going to be able to handle it. They're compromising and they're doing this and they're doing that when what we need to be doing is coming right alongside them, putting our arm around them and encouraging them in the power of God. Well, glory. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes we think that they're too weak. I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes people will surprise you. They're a lot stronger than what you give them credit for. Amen. Our faith should not stand in what we see on the outward appearance. Amen? But our faith should stand on what we know that God has on the inside of their heart. It's the power that works on the inside of their heart. Amen? I think that we should ask ourselves in these last days, will we be strong enough as the church of God to face the opposition that is going to come our way? We can drive all over this wonderful town the town of Dallas. We can drive all over this town. We can drive all over Gaston County. We can even so much as we can drive all over the United States of America, and you'll come across building after building that has church on it. Look at your neighbor and say he's telling the truth. Amen. I pastored in a little place back home, there was probably about eight churches in the same holler. And you know what? I said, I ain't competing with none of them. But I think about all of them was birthed out of our church originally, and they'd just get mad, and they'd go up the road and start a church. Then they'd get mad and have a split and go up the road and start a church. Then they'd get mad and go up the road and start a church. Amen. And that ain't no way to live. Amen. Ain't no way to live. But let me tell you something about the church. If you don't believe that God can save the worst sinner, take church off the door. If you don't believe that God can deliver the drug addict, take church off the door. Amen. If you don't believe that God can set the sexually confused free, take church off the door. I believe God can do anything. I believe he can deliver. I believe he can save. I believe he can set free. And he does it not because we have a form of godliness, but because of the power of God that can work inside of man's heart. If you don't believe that God can rescue the backslidden, if you don't believe that God can save your spouse or your son or your daughter or your grandkids, take church off the door. But the God that I serve is able to do exceeding abundantly above all I can ask or think of him. And I know he's almighty, and I know he's all-powerful, and I know that he wants to do a work. But if you can't let God have his will and have his way in the building, take church off the door. 
Let me tell you something about the church. Jesus declared, he said, up on this rock, he said, I will build my church. Some of you wonder why we're still here and why we're still standing. It's because we are the church. Look at your neighbor and say, we are the church. We are the born again. We are the sanctified. We are the ones covered by the blood of Jesus. We are the church of the living God. Because of what Jesus did at the cross of Calvary, we are the church. And we don't just come in here and we don't just have just a form of godliness. But we come in and we, we have a sincere heart before the Lord. And we love God. And because we love God, we love other people. And because we love God, we have a desire to see souls saved. I believe that's the heart of God is to see souls born into his kingdom. And because we love God, we have a burden to see people healed and set free and delivered. And it's time that we stand up and be the church. Not just a place that we attend, not just a building, not just a title, but something that we are. Look at your neighbor and say, we are the church. The true church is the driving force that is holding back the presence of evil. We are doing our best to combat the enemy in every way that we can. Some of you are sitting in here, you've got lost family members. Some of you are sitting in here that you are a prayer warrior. How many prayer warriors we got in this church? Raise your hand. We got some prayer warriors in this church. You might be the only reason. You might be the one standing in the gap for somebody. You might be the only reason that... that Somebody has not just been overtaken and completely destroyed because of your prayers. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, the Bible said, availeth much. God's still working and God's still moving. The church is the light and the light is beaming out into the darkness of this world and it is shining a ray of hope. We are still here as the church of God and God has let us come through this this storm that we have been in and God is healing us and God is restoring us for one reason so that we can minister that grace and we can minister that truth that he is ministering unto us. Amen. Glory to his name. The church is a voice that is declaring the word of Almighty God. You see, I'm, I know I'm not a good preacher. I know I'm not the best but right now I'm all you got, so you're just going to have to get over it. <laughs> Amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say I'm praying for him. You see, it's the Word that does the work. It's not got anything to do with me or with you. It's got all to do with the Word. The Word is what does the work. It's the word that God is faithful to. It is his word that he is giving us to preach and to sing and to declare unto all the nations and to share exactly who he is. So we as the church, we are the voice that is declaring the word of God. The church is those who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Ain't you glad that you've been redeemed? Ain't you glad that you've been rescued? Ain't you glad that you had an altar experience with the Lord and he set you free from your sin and he made you a new creation in him? Ain't you glad that he wrote your name in the Lamb's book of life? He gave you something, an inheritance. Come on. Ain't you glad that he thinks good thoughts towards you? Ain't you glad that your name is written in heaven and ain't you glad that he's got a place prepared for you? Ain't you glad that he is our soon coming Lord and he's our soon coming King? And he's coming back for those that have been changed in their heart and redeemed by the blood of Jesus. The book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 13, the Bible said, but now in Christ Jesus... Ye who were sometimes were afar off, you've been made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, a lot of times we feel like that we are so distant from the Lord. Well, I'll tell you what separates you and what creates distance is sin. Sin creates distance between you and Almighty God. 
Because despite what the world says, we still serve a God who is holy and righteous in all of his ways. And he expects us as his people to live holy and to live soberly and to live righteously. But we can't do it within ourselves. We need help that comes from the blood of Jesus Christ and the power from up above. You see, so many people today have got confused with what it means to have the power of God. You can shout as much as you want to shout. You can dance as hard as you can dance. You can run or walk or scoot laps around the church, but that won't save you. Amen. That won't save you. That won't do a thing for you unless you're saved and born again by the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that makes the heart change. It changes our heart. It takes our sins away. What can wash away our sins, the song says. We just sung it, I believe, tonight. Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. I don't understand why we don't sing more about the blood. I don't know why I don't preach more about the blood. Because it's the blood that sets the captive free. I believe today that we've been brought nigh. We've been brought close to the Lord by the blood of Jesus Christ. Listen who the church is. The church is those who profess and declare that Jesus Christ is in their life and their works are a reflection of their true relationship with Almighty God. You see, when you get saved and when you get born again into the kingdom of God, your actions will change. You won't do the things that you used to do. You won't watch the things that you used to watch. You won't participate in the things that you used to participate in. You won't have fellowship with the same things that you used to have fellowship with. Amen. Because the Lord is calling us out and he's calling us to be separate from the world. We're supposed to live differently. We're supposed to, I believe, look differently. Come on. I, I believe that. Come on. I believe that we are supposed to be a reflection of the power of God that is working inside of our heart. But then the confusion comes when there's many that have that reflection and they have that form. You see, a lot of times we, we get caught up on, on the outward appearance of man. Come on. You can put a monkey in a three-piece suit, but he's still a monkey. Amen. Amen. You can put a sinner in a three-piece suit, and he might meet all the religious qualifications, but he's still a sinner. But what saves him is not the outward appearance or what we can do in our own works, but what saves the heart of man is nothing but the blood of Jesus. Now, when the blood of Jesus Christ covers you, it will once again change you. It will cause you to flee youthful lusts. It will cause you to abstain from ungodliness. It'll cause you to do things differently in your life because of the love that has been ministered to you, and you have found something far greater and much better than what you were living like in the world. And so we find that we're not saved by works, but we're saved by grace through faith. The church is the chosen. The church is the redeemed. The church is the blood-bought. The church is the body of Christ. And again, many have the form, or they have the acts, but they reject the power of God that can make you live godly. Amen. And that is what Paul 
was trying to convey to Timothy, you're going to face people that are going to despise your youth. But he said, let no man despise your youth. You're going to face opposition, but you're more than a conqueror. There's going to be things that are going to come against you, but remember who you are. And I think sometimes we need to remember who we are. You see, I don't want to just come in and be somebody that just acts the part. I'm not into that. And God's not in it either. Because they that worship him, you can't, you got to do it in spirit and in truth. God's not going to inhabit our flesh. He's not going to, he's not going to come and bless our flesh. I don't believe. I think what God wants to do is I think he looks at the spirit. And I think he looks of what we do from the heart, from our heart, what we give unto him. And I think that's what he desires most of all is he wants things to come from our heart. But many have got the, the acting part down pat. But they've rejected the power of God. And see, what we need to understand is when you reject the power of Almighty God, you're just saying that you don't have faith in what Jesus perfected at Calvary. Jesus is the one who has bought you. Jesus is the one that has purchased you. It's because of the Lord tonight and his mercy that you are here tonight and that you've not been consumed. We used to sing a song back home, had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost. Can I tell you that the Lord is still in the business of saving souls? He's still in the business of delivering those that are, that are so polluted in their mind and so confused. The Lord is still in the delivering business. And he's still willing to set the captive free. There was a time coming to a close in the book of John. You see, so many people today, they don't want to trust in this power. But if you'll get a hold of the power, you won't have to act. Amen. You know, sometimes we think the only place that we have joy is in the church house, but you can have joy in your house. And we feel like sometimes that we just got to be amongst other people to have joy or to, to have compassion or something. But listen, wherever I go, you have to have the, under, the understanding that wherever we go that the Lord is with us. He's present with us. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. He is right with us. Well, there was a portion of Scripture in the book of John, chapter number 20. And after Jesus was risen from the, from the dead, after he had been resurrected, Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus. He was not with them when Jesus came, the Bible said. And the other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see his hands, the print of the nails... And put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, he said, I will not believe. And so it was eight days after, again, his disciples were with him, and Thomas was with him. Then came Jesus, and the doors being shut, he stood in the midst and he said, Peace be unto you. Then he, speaking of Jesus to Thomas, he said, Reach hither thy finger and behold my hands and reach hither thy hand and thrust it in my side and be not faithless but believing and you know what happened Thomas answered and said unto him my Lord and my God I read that today and I thought oh my goodness thank you Jesus thank you Lord that you are my Lord and that you are my God and Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. He said, but blessed are they that have not seen and yet believe. Can I tell you today that salvation begins with faith? It begins with faith. So many people are so confused 
thinking that they cannot live this life unto the Lord. People are all the time trying to fix things up. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. I'm, I'm going to have to get my life straightened out. And the enemy creates confusion and deception with that. That is junk. Amen. What God needs is an humble heart. What God needs is a man or a woman to say yes to him. What God needs is somebody to say, Lord, I'm broken into a million pieces. But, Lord, I'm coming to you believing that you can put me back together, that you can take away my sin, that you can forgive me, that you can make me a new creation in you. That's what God is desiring for his people in these last days. There's something about when you and I walk out the doors of this church, when we walk out not as religious, not as just saying that, that we've been in, in church not just saying that we've got a title, but there's something about when we walk out the doors and we walk in the power that the Lord has placed inside of our soul. That is what makes the difference. That is what makes the difference. And it's something today that we need to have an understanding of. See, I don't want to be a part of something that is just having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. But I want to be a part of something that says, I know what the power of God can do. I know that the God that I serve is almighty. He's all-powerful. He's greater than my problems. He's greater than my burden. He's greater than my sin. He's greater than my sickness. He's greater than my addictions. Come on. He's, he's greater than anything that I'm battling or wrestling with in my flesh. He's far greater than all of that. Amen. Our God is greater and because he is great and all-powerful, we can walk out of here and we can face a world that is full of darkness. And we can go out here and we can say that we're the church. And we can begin to minister this love. And we can begin to minister this mercy and this grace and this compassion because of the power, the power that works inside of us. Our wisdom shouldn't stand in men, but in the demonstration of power, of God. We need to understand tonight that it's not by might and it's not by power, but the Lord declares it was by his spirit, saith the Lord. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. God, we declare that you are all-powerful. God, we thank you that we are your church we thank you, Lord, that we can go out here. And, Lord, so many people are coming into this church, visitors every Sunday. God, so many people that have left are coming back. God, I just declare them for you, for your glory. God, I just declare that they will return to this flock. God, I just pray, Lord, that all the division and the separation and, God, the unforgiveness and, Lord, anything that would trouble us in any way, God, would be laid aside. God, I just feel a spirit of unity. I feel a spirit of love like I've never felt. Lord, it gets greater and greater and greater and greater. And the enemy hates it. He despises it. And God, I just believe tonight, Lord, that the enemy has done his absolute best to mark church out on this door. But God, I, I believe with all certainty that he tried to write death and destruction upon this place. But Lord, you came and you said no to that. And Lord, you said, I'm going to breathe a breath of life into this place. I'm going to breathe a breath of life into this congregation. And I'm going to restore them for my glory. And so God, I know tonight, Lord, that you're a giver of life. And Lord, you're a restorer of life. And so, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that we would just continue to flow in your power, Lord, in your glory, Lord, that comes from on high. Lord, we are so weak. Lord, so many times we fail, we come short. But, God, in our weakness, Lord, you are made strong. God, I just pray, Lord, as we just all over this place, as we raise our hands towards you tonight, Lord, I pray, God, that you would just begin to reach down and you would strengthen us, Lord, from the power from on high. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in the book of Acts chapter 2. Lord, when the Holy Ghost descended and it fell upon each and every one of them, cloven tongues like as a fire. And Lord, we know that after they received the Holy Ghost, Lord, 
they were endued with that power. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. Lord, we know and we believe because that power works inside of us. And Lord, it's not of us, but Lord, it's all about you. Help us tonight, Lord, to realize that, that we've got a vessel and we want to be vessels of honor and not of dishonor. Lord, help us to understand that our vessels need to be holy. Lord, that our vessels need to be pure. And God, that we need to make sure that we keep our vessels full. And Lord, that we're not just allowing any old thing to come inside of our spirit and live. Lord, we take authority over the enemy. Lord, we bind him right now in the name of Jesus. We take authority over the enemy that would create doubt in hearts saying that they can't live it. Lord, I just plead the blood of Jesus right now. God, over this congregation. Lord, if there's one here tonight, Lord, that does not know you. God, I pray, Lord, that they would just come to this altar. Lord, that they would receive you. And Lord, that they would know, God, that you love them and that you died for them, and you shed your blood on a cross that they could be saved, that they could tonight, if they need it, they could have their names written in the Lamb's book of life. Lord, I pray that you'd draw people with your spirit. God, I pray. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in this church. God, continue to let us, Lord, go forth and be your church. Let us go forth and declare your power. Let us go forth and declare that you're a loving Savior. Lord, that you're full of grace and mercy and compassion. And Lord, we know that you're wonderful in all things. We praise you tonight. In the name of Jesus, if every head would be bowed for just a moment, if you're here in this sanctuary, you're not here by accident. Amen. If you've got things in your life that maybe the Lord has just spoke to you and he's dealt with you, things that are hindering you from a, from a walk with the Lord. Would you come down to this altar? Would you say, tonight is going to be my night. I'm going to give it all to Jesus. I'm going to let that blood cover my sins. Would you come to this altar and would you say yes to Jesus? Would you say, Lord, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring my heart and I'm going to give it to you. Would you come? The enemy will tell you you can't live this life, but he's a liar. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit, you can live this life. And you can live this life unto the Lord. If you're here tonight and you need to know Jesus, would you come? hearts and minds are clear. Praise the Lord. If I can get everybody to stand tonight. It is no secret what God can do. Oh, what He's done for us. church singing it.
What God can do. Will you take your neighbor by the hand for just a minute? I love these prayers of unity. You know, was it the church? Was it in the book of Acts? Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. It's been a little bit since I've read the story, but there was a church that was in unity, and they were convening on Peter's behalf, and they were praying for his release. And we all know the story, but they were there, and they were praying in unity. There's something about when a church prays for a need in unity. I got a message from an online viewer. They received the card and the prayer cloth that we sent a week or so ago, and the, they, just, they just had such a sweet testimony. One, one individual that we were praying for ended up passing away, but you know God had a perfect plan in that. But this lady told me that she has a lot of pain in her body, and she said that she has slept good for two nights, for eight and nine hours, I believe it was. So God answered the prayers. When we passed that prayer cloth around and it touched the hands of this church, we joined together in unity. Can we just, knowing that we've got a lot of needs, but we know that we can take them to God who supplied all needs. Can we just begin to pray for each other, pray for our church, pray for me. Lord, we love you tonight. We thank you, Jesus. God, we just thank you, Lord, for everything. Lord, God, we praise you, Lord, because you are in control of it all. Lord, we just pray, God, in unity tonight, Lord, Lord, that you would begin to, Lord, to just heal. God, I pray that you'd save. I pray that you'd deliver. God, help us, Lord, to be the voice, Lord, crying in this town crying out over the, the means of Facebook and YouTube that people don't have to live the way that they're living but God they can be saved they can be restored they can be set free because Lord you love people you're in the saving business you're in the healing business you're in the restoration business Lord you're a deliverer you're the almighty God you're the everlasting father Lord you're the prince of peace God, I pray, Lord, for all of those, all the needs, Lord, of the congregation. Lord, that you would just begin to supply those needs. Lord, we lift our hands towards you tonight. God, in worship and in thanksgiving, Lord, we just honor you tonight. God, for everything that you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for the service this morning. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. And God, thank you for hearts that are willing and humble, Lord, to obey you. And God, that are willing to strive, Lord, to make heaven their home. God, thank you for those that, Lord, that just have a passion for souls. God, we praise you. God, for what you're doing. God, keep us humble. Keep us in the center of your will. God, help us, Lord, to have conviction when we do wrong. Lord, knowing that you search the heart. Lord, you know everything about us. God, I just pray, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to just not just get caught up in just vain repetition. But, God, we'll have a genuine and a true experience with you, Lord. Holy Ghost, move in this place. Lord, that we'll have an experience with you. God, like no other, an experience, God, that keeps us free. Lord, that sets us free. Lord, that endues causes us to be endued with the power from on high. Lord, we worship you. We praise you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for setting the captive free. Thank you, Lord, for opening blinded eyes. Thank you, Lord, for causing the lame to walk. Lord, thank you for cleansing the lepers. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you open blind eyes. And Lord, also those that are spiritually blind. We thank you, Lord, that you still save. God, we praise you tonight. We just magnify you. We lift you up. We worship you in this place. We declare your name, Lord, to this town, to this community. Lord, may your name be magnified in this place. Lord, may you be lifted up. Scripture declares, you said, Lord, if you be lifted up, that you draw all men unto you. God, we pray that you draw us to you. 
God, we pray for every heart here tonight, Lord, to be strengthened. We pray for every soul, God, to be covered by your blood. God, don't let a soul leave this place lost and undone without your blood. Lord, I pray if there's those tonight, Lord, that need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, Lord, I pray that they'd receive the baptism. Lord, if those are here tonight, Lord, that are desiring the spiritual gifts, whatever it is that they're desiring and earnestly seeking, God, I pray that you'd, you would grant them, you'd fill them, Lord, with the power. Lord, we praise you. We praise you for this power. Lord, we reverence it tonight in the name of Jesus. Let's come around this altar. Thank you, Jesus.
this microphone on still? Church, this is Devin, and the angels in heaven are rejoicing tonight because he made Jesus his Savior. He's, he's 17 years old, and he walked to church tonight. And we're, we're so thankful that he came. And I believe God sent him here. So you take the time to love him and encourage him and just put your arm around him and let him know that we as a church, that we're here for him and that we'll be with him and stand behind him. Amen. Amen. You want to say anything? Okay, he's shy. Praise the Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I was clothed in the rags of my sin, wretched and poor, standing lonely within, but with wondrous compassion, the King of all kings, in pity and love, he took me under wings. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm a child of the King. His royal blood now flows in my veins. And I, who was wretched and poor, now can sing. Praise God. child of the King. Can we give the Lord another good clap of praise? I'll never forget my first Sunday coming here to Dallas to try out as your pastor. And I encountered Moses out here on the, on the sidewalk. Now I've got to go looking for him. I left, I left Dallas that Sunday night after service. I was so torn. I was, I was crying. And I, I, the next day I got up, I thought, I'm just tired. The next day I got up, I was crying. And I said, Lord, if, if, if this is what you want, you're going to have to speak to the people. And it was my heart that if there was more, that God would send me back. And I believe that there's a ripe harvest, church. There's a harvest that's ripe. And I want to be about God's business. And I thank you for being a loving church, for being a church that's willing to, to get down in the altars and pray and help, help these people. Look at the seed that you planted this morning. Can 17 go to the youth class on Wednesday nights? Yeah. Thomas says yes. God's at work. And it's God. It's all about God. It's what he's doing. And I'm just thankful. I praise the Lord for leading me here. I thank God that you're here. And look at your neighbor and say, we are in this together. We're in this together. Lord, I pray tonight, Lord, as we leave this church, God, that we would leave here, Lord, walking in your true power. God, that we would walk here, leaving this place, Lord, free from sin. Lord, free from the power of darkness. But God, we'll walk away from this church tonight, illuminated, because we've been in your presence. Lord, we'll walk away tonight, Lord, in your name, declaring your name, Lord, to this town and to this nation, to this world. God, we'll walk away as soldiers of Christ. God, help us as we go forth in this crosswalk this Friday. God, I pray, Lord, that more souls would be pointed to you. God, as we truly remember what you did on that cross, the price that you paid for all of our sin. 
God, I pray, Lord, that it would just be a testimony, Lord, unto this town, unto this community as they see us walk in the streets of Dallas. God, they would they be reminded of the perfect redemption plan that you paid for on the cross. We love you tonight, Jesus. We praise you for it all. Lord, we're your people. This is your church.